All right, in this video, we're going to take you through how to set up a foundation wall so that you have a full foundation wall and a footer underneath of your small house or your simple house. So to do this, we're going to start working with an 8 by 16 uh, CMU masonry wall. So we're going to jump into Revit here. And when we're finished, um, when we're finished up here, we're going to have a uh, 8 foot high or 8 foot tall um, foundation wall underneath of our home. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up additional levels. So we're going to go ahead and pull out a few levels here. And I like to always do this on uh, my east elevations because uh, it seems like things lock up there a whole lot better so that the levels all align. So I'm going to go to one of my elevation views, don't really matter which one, and I'm going to grab my architecture tab and then my datum level. And I'm going to mouse over here, wait till these align, make sure you get that dotted line that shows up, and then come down and then just pull across the screen and set that up, hit escape. And I'm going to immediately zoom in and change this level 7 to become BO for bottom of foundation. So that will be the bottom of foundation. Always, always, always make sure that you do say, would you like to rename the corresponding views? Say yes. That way it will show up over here in your floor plans. So here's the bottom of the foundation. And a nice little trick uh, to making these set up properly, if you want to have an eight foot tall wall, if you just grab the uh, dimension tool and you can grab it from your annotation tab or on the architecture uh, tab, you can grab this measure tool and you can actually dimension to the level itself, select the level line, and then just change this dimension. If you change the dimension, it will then push the level down to the appropriate distance away from your zero, zero, level one. So a little handy tool there. Uh, go ahead and zoom back out here. We're going to grab another level and make sure they align. And then go ahead and set up the BO footer layer. And that is bottom of footer. And that's where the footer is going to sit and always rename the view. And this is going to be an eight inch footer. So we'll just go ahead and set up the eight inch footer. Now, I would always, always recommend setting up the elbows immediately so that you can see the levels and see the lines so they're nice and clean. And so now I'm going to jump into my detail wall section and I can see that I have levels down here. Go ahead and pull this down. And these should have a linked up here. There they go. They're linking up. I always like to keep things nice, neat, and organized. So now we're going to go ahead and put our uh, 8 by 16 CMU wall underneath of our house here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to then see the outside edges of the walls so that when we draw, we can place that uh, edge of the foundation wall directly underneath of this stud so that these two layers actually overhang the CMU foundation wall. Okay, so by doing that, uh, to do that, we'll go ahead and go back to our, actually we'll go to our BO foundation layer, because we created that, so we'll go to BO foundation, and we can't see anything, because right now my view range is set up so that everything is based off of the BO foundation, and nothing that I can see is actually running into that view. The way to see that view range and understand what's happening in the view range is uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this old view here. I'm going to get rid of my east view. And then I want to tile these two views so I can see them together. So I'm going to go to the view tab at the top here of the screen. And I'm going to hit tile views. And then that what it allows me to do is see my BO foundation layer. And then I can also see all my levels. Then as I open up the view range for the BO foundation layer, I can then come over here to my properties while the BO foundation layer is active. And I can find my view range. When I find the view range, this is the information that the view range is set to. So its associate level, associated level is BO foundation, and that the top range for that is at seven foot six. Well, the top range at seven foot six from the BO foundation level is somewhere in this range here. Okay, so I won't see anything up here. The cut plane, and that's what's slicing the solid object in half, and that's what you see is the cut plane view, is at four feet. Again well down here into the range where there's nothing located. So we need to move both of those ranges up in order for anything to show up over here in the BO foundation level. So we're going to take this top range, I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to bring this top range up into what would be the range of this wall. Okay, so we're just talking about how far up are we going to go to do this? Well, we're nine feet 
one and a half below my zero zero level. Okay, so we're going to come up higher than nine feet, one and a half. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in 10 feet. The cut plane is going to come up as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put that at, say, nine foot, six inches. And I always just like to hit apply down here instead of hitting OK, because that gets rid of the view range. Once I hit apply, well, I can come over and see, well, there's something happening over here. So now I'm going to hit OK, get rid of that, and we can zoom in. Now, some of the first things I see is I have these previously made um, interior elevations. We don't need any of that stuff. So I also look like it's, it's huge here. So I'm going to change my scale to be quarter inch equals a foot, makes things a little more manageable. And then I don't really have to worry about these uh, elevations inside here. Next thing I want to do is I want to set up my detail view so it's fine. By doing that, I should then be able to see levels in the wall. And that's important because I need to see that stud level because that's where I'm going to be drawing my walls, okay? So by doing that, I'm now looking at these walls above my BO foundation, but I'm drawing on the BO foundation level. So now I can go ahead and start building out some walls. So I'll go ahead and grab my architecture tab. I'm going to go ahead and grab the wall tool. And then I'm going to come over and I just like to start working on that basic wall, generic six inch, hit edit type. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the wall and I'm going to call it eight by 16 CMU. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. With the structure, I'm going to hit edit and I'm going to set this up. And looks like this has been done in here once before, but I can go down and pull this material and I can show you that if I'm going to go ahead and pull just a CMU wall, there's my CMU walls, just this masonry, uh, concrete masonry units. If I select it and again, duplicate the selected material, that way I can go into the identity and then name it and give it the description exactly how I want it to show up in my detailed section views. So if I come back in here and I set this up to say that I want this to be called uh, 8 by 16, and this is going to be CMU because I don't need concrete masonry units to be explained, nor do I necessarily need the word masonry. So we'll just call this a CMU, 8 by 16. We'll highlight that. We'll paste that in here. And now you can see that changes over here in my materials. So with this setup, that's the only thing I changed. I hit apply, I hit OK. That shows up. The thickness would be 8 inches, and I'm ready to hit OK again and hit OK again. Now I'm ready to start drawing my walls out. So the wall is going to get drawn based on what will be the external face. So I'm going to pull down my wall location and I'm going to go and select finish face exterior. Okay, because I didn't set up any core boundaries or anything else like that. So finish face exterior. So now I'm going to look over here and I'm going to see that my base constraint is BO foundation and my top constraint is TO foundation. So it's going to go from the BO foundation up to TO. That's exactly where I want it to go. So now I can go ahead and find the layer of the wall that I'm going to draw on. And I'm going to go ahead and click and start drawing that wall in position. So zoom out, rollerball over, zoom in. And I just keep zipping around the house here, just tracing out the walls that I want. And as I've hit this wall that goes through my section, you can see the foundation showing up. It's looking like it's in a great position. So we just keep going around until we get all the way around the house, then hit escape. So now there is my CMU foundation wall in my detail view. If I wanted to go ahead and annotate that and grab my material tag, it should then already be set up to be the material tag that I just called out in the description at the eight by 16 CMU wall. All right, so now we've got our foundation wall in position. Next thing we're ready to do is go ahead and add that uh, 24 inch uh, cast in place concrete or 24 inch concrete um, footer. So I jump back into Revit here and I'm gonna go back to the BO foundation level. And I could actually jump to the BO footer level if I wanted to do that and draw directly underneath these walls or I could draw all in BO foundation, just making sure that my base and top constraints are set. But for this, we'll just stay on BO footer and I'll go back to architecture and grab my wall tool. And this time I'll go back to that basic six and hit edit type. We'll duplicate it again. And the duplication is gonna become a 24 inch uh, concrete uh, footer. And 
we can also, if we wanted to do, uh, say, uh, number eight rebar. All right. Set that all up there. So we've got a 24-inch concrete footer with number eight rebar. So then we're going to jump back into the edit, and we're going to change the material in here. We just need to jump into here to concrete. So we'll select this and type in concrete. And we'll find the concrete. Now here I've done one already, but we'll go through and duplicate it again. Grabbing concrete, grab the duplication, duplicate it, jump into here. And we're going to then go ahead and call this 24 inch concrete footer. Oops, capitalize. And then we'll do uh, number eight bar. All right, so we'll just double click on this, copy it, and we'll put that into this description as well. With that all set up in place, uh, we duplicated that. We're going to hit apply. I'm going to hit OK. Now the thickness. Uh, the thickness of this wall needs to get changed. It's going to be 24 inches. All right, so it's two feet or 24 inches. And then we'll go ahead and hit OK. Hit OK again. And now we're ready to draw the wall underneath of the foundation uh, wall. Our base constraint, since we're on the BO footer level, is going to be base constraint, BO footer, Top constraint, bottom of foundation. So we're good to go here. And I want the location line to be wall center line because I want that footer to be directly underneath of that foundation wall. So by doing that, if I then select the center of the wall and I start tracing the center of that wall, you're going to see that wall start showing up. It's directly underneath of that foundation wall. As soon as I go through the section, uh, we can see the foundation occur and show up in my detail wall section here. And then we'll go ahead and work our way around here. Hit cancel, get out of that, hit escape. And there is our concrete footer. I'll go ahead and uh, go to annotate. I'll grab my material tag. And I should be able to then tag this material as 24 inch concrete footer with number eight rebar. So there we are, we're set up for our footer. Next thing we can do is start looking at adding our uh, concrete floor and then setting up sheets so that we can then uh, go ahead and note all of this information properly on uh, sets of sheets. So that'll be in a different video.